Hello. Hi. I know... I know you haven't played any of these games. I only played the first one, and I watched Rummy play a little bit of the second one. I don't know anything about this, sec this or the third one. There's like so many. There's like just, four of I, them I just now? know that they're popular among the monster fucker community. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's also very queer. It's very good. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I gotta turn you down a little bit now. <laughs> really loud. Oh, am I loud? Uh, I think this on my end. I'll be just freezing up again. Why is it like that? I don't know. Sometimes I'm loud on stream too without realizing it. Maybe I should just switch to only having one of my ears on for my headset. Mm. So I can gauge how loud I'm being. Because <laughs> these are not open back head mm. uh, ear cups. Yeah, I think that's better now. I wonder why my second monitor is being weird. I don't know if it's my second monitor or it's OPS. Oh. Just keeps freezing up. Alright, there we go. Okay. Alright. Uh, I also didn't know. I, I was look I was like, oh yeah, I wonder what like DLC there is. Um one of my favorite characters from the first game is like a playable character in this game. Uh, her name is Zoe. She's like an elder horror and also canonically trans. And uh, there was also a pack that was just like a bunch of other like new extra playable characters, so I grabbed that too because there's some cute ones okay, in there. Yeah. Uh, voice interjections, make your voice own voices. We'll leave the voices on. Sweet. Two players. Uh. Maybe like a medium game? Or do you want to do like a short game first to get, get the hang of it and then maybe do like a second round that's longer? Two mediums should be fine. Yeah. Ah, Camp Spooky, the stage of some of our dearest summers. Back then we were young and unafraid. With school far away, everything seemed possible as the sun embraced us on our way to camp. Summer has a distinct power, doesn't it? You live the days while the nights inebriate you with possibilities. It's like life could take a turn at every corner. And for us, it did. Oh, wait. Come. Oh, okay. So these are the basic default characters, but each one has like a secondary... Okay, I need to be yellow because I need to be Zoe. But here's the other... Alt. <laughs> That looks- that literally just looks like a squid billy. It does! It looks like a cute squid billy. Yeah. Like when the good- the grandpa was younger. Oh, I don't know if you can- Hold on, I'm peeking my mic now. I don't know if you can see it. She's- uh, the book that she's reading has Naruto and Garfield on it. Yeah. Uh, there's this whole thing- Hey, Manuel. Uh, there's this whole thing where um, she writes fanfiction, and one of the weird, like, crack ship fanfictions that she likes is uh, Garfield x, x Naruto. And, um, there's, like, one of the endings in the last game where if you match up with her, uh, there's, like, art of, like, you two going to a convention together. And I, I think it's, like, she's in a Garfield Kigu, and, like, you're dressed as Naruto. <laughs> It's beautiful. It's very cute. <laughs> I'm just gonna do Zoe. Eldritch Cutie, reporting for duty. I don't know what these are. Let's just pick a random. Oh, it gives you stats. So there's the original characters for each one, and then there's the extra DLC characters. I'll, I'll be one of the blue ones, you pick which. Because they're both cute. They're both very good. I really like this one. Okay. Do you want to do custom names? Jan is fine. Because that's her default name, right? Oh, I can't. 
Can I back out of this? Okay. Suzanne? Sure. Do you hear pronouns? Yeah, she hers fine. Let's I, storm this camp! There, but mm. I will go down someone's throat if they misgender my friends. Mm. I don't know what these... So, these apparently just give you random stats. So, there's different stats in this game that, like, dictate different shit that you can do. But I can, it doesn't even tell you what, what they are. I want the sock puppet. Yeah. And the knife. Why does that say business anal paste? <laughs> that oh. might be the name of this. <laughs> no, that's the name of this item. I was like, why does it switch to business anal paste? Yeah, the, the knife. The machete. Okay. And what's the checker print thing? The th chest two? Chest two. Uh... Hard tack. Just hard tack. Nothing special, yeah, just hard, hard tack. tack. <laughs> One might say that the monster prom had hardness on the highs and lows of love. But no, in love, we're always absolute beginners, and summer camp was no different. No one talked about it, but the idea of a summer love boomed over our heads. Close to the last day of camp, there was a meteor shower happening, just three weeks away. Everyone knew that if you were into someone, you were going to watch that damn thing together. And so a silent yet powerful pressure invaded us. It was the monster problem all over again. Everything seemed uncertain. Everything but one thing. Whoever we were asking on a meteor shower date, it was probably going to be one of the six coolest people on that bus. Joey Johnson Jojima, a badass which you wanted to chill a bit after saving the world countless times. Aravi Mishra, a hot-headed adventurer possessed by a curse who had turned out to be the most annoying roommate ever. Calculester, Hewlett Packard, a library computer who had become a sentient robot ready to experience life to its fullest. Uh, this robot's voiced by Jack Septiguy. <laughs> Dahlia Aquino, a buff blue demon and warmonger who would set her sights on conquering summer next. Damien LeVay, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. And Milo Belladonna, 23 question mark, a death reaper doubling as an internet influencer who is profoundly in love with life and all its earthly pleasures. I can't decide who I like. I, I know, everyone's the really one good. One of the first two. Mm -hmm. The bus trip was long and all of summer could be shaped by the first step well taken. And so it was clear, it all came down to breaking the ice and causing a good impression with the right person. There's also a side character in- the, well, there's a side character in this one, they were a dateable character in the first game, but the, uh, there's like a werewolf guy that's voiced by Aaron from Game Grumps. Mm. Uh, which book would you take to a deserted island? Interview with a very sexy vampire? <laughs> the Art of War, Famous Last Word, the Microweb Manual, the very- Little Very Angry Prince, Guide for Speedrunning Life. Uh, Art of War. Either the speedrunning life or the little, very angry prince. I, I don't know. You pick for me. Okay. I, I'm gonna pick a little, very angry prince. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I guess that makes sense. She was literally a war manga, but I was like, oh, this is literally the character I was gunning for anyway. <laughs> I wasn't oh, thinking okay. about it that way. <laughs> yeah. Nice, I love the art of war. Sansu knew it was up. Shit, that means that means I, I'm going for Damien, huh? Probably. I've skimmed his book dozens of times. Usually I skip the art stuff and read straight to the war. You've read the whole thing, haven't you, Zoe? Maybe you can tell me what I've been missing from the artsy fartsy parts. Yeah, I think you picked Damien. <laughs> okay. Wait, Suzanne, you've read The Little Very Angry Prince too? That's crazy! I thought it was just a book my dad's made up to get me to shut up and fall asleep when I was a kid. My favorite line was the last line. Shut up and go to sleep, Damien. Love, Blue Dad. <laughs> What's your favorite line? We should talk about this more when we get to camp. We only had three weeks left to wear our crushes and conquer their hearts. You could, prob you could probably go for someone else. I don't know how this game works, actually. <laughs> it's probably the availability to, like... Go for someone else if you don't like Damien. him. Figure it out. I don't know. You could also just, on the second go through, figure that out. Figure on that, figure out one, that yeah. yeah. 
But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. My turn? OMG! So yeah, there's different stats. Smarts, boldness, creativity, charm, and fun, and they... It's kind of like in Persona, like those stats. It's kind of like that, I guess. Um, unless they changed it, like, if one person picks a location to go to to do an event, I think the other person can't go to that same place. We'll figure it out as we go. Yeah. I'm gonna go to the lake. <laughs> <laughs> you spend the day playing in the lake. Everything is fun until you're mesmerized by a strange song. It's the sirens! They try to lure you with their beautiful chants, but you know you know better and challenge them to a riff off. They kick your ass, but you all definitely have a lot of fun. More specifically, plus two fun. You find your way to what looks like an uninhabited portion of the lake shore. You're just settling down and enjoy some low time. <gasps> Delia comes bursting out of the lake, her soaking clothes clinging to her muscular body, her bosom heaving. You're so aroused, but almost forget to ask why she just came bursting out of the lake. Oh man! I've been defeated, Zoe, defeated by the lake and by my own treacherous body. I'm attempting to earn the have an entire tea party at the bottom of the lake badge, but I simply cannot hold my breath for long enough. My lungs have failed me. <sighs> Disloyal lungs, I shall discipline you. Hurrah! <sighs> he stopped Dali from reaching down her own throat to throttle her lungs and explained that the tea party badge is probably only meant to be earned by Murpho. Oh man! That's ridiculous. The Monster Scouts would never create a badge only certain kinds of monsters would earn. There's literally a badge for being a person because mer people are genetically superior to all their monsters. The Monster Scouts have a long and troubling history. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, I'm, I'm, I'll, I've never let my lack of guilt stop me before and I'm not about to start. All I need is the perfect breath holding technique and I'll show those stupid snobby merfolk why they call me Dalia Queen. Other than because that's my last name. But uh, I do not know such a brief breath holding technique. Shall you do though, teach it to me. We can do a makeover so breathtaking you won't have to breathe. You go on into the lake, I'll stay here and hold your breath for you. You don't deserve a badge for that! Why did I not consider this sooner? A true leader trusts her advisors with everything, up to and including the breath in her lungs. <laughs> Come here, loyal breath steward, so I may give my precious oxygen into your care. Dahlia pulls you close, locks lips with you, and breathes from her lungs into your lungs. It's as sexy as it is moist, which is very. Soon you can feel the breath of two people inside you. You're breathing for two now. How romantic. Dolly nods silently to you and descends beneath the lake surface. You better not fuck this up. No sooner is Dolly gone than her breath launches into a desperate struggle to escape. It punches your sternum, bites your bronchioles, and calls your esophagus. Your breath is too powerful for it, though. With a few deft maneuvers, it's got Dolly's breath in a tiger faint crucifix armbar. But Dolly's breath is no slouch either. It manages to use your chicken, your best strength against it, and soon has it in a chicken wing over the shoulder crossface. The melee continues. First your breath gains the advantage, then Dahlia's. The two roll around your lungs in a desperate embrace. Slowly the kicking and struggling subsides, and it becomes a struggle of an entirely different sort. Dahlia re-emerges from the lake, her freshly drenched skin gleaming in the sunlight. Wordlessly, she strides to you, grasps her face in both hands, and takes your breath away. You're OP! Ah, uh, what is this? It seems our breath has mingled and become something entirely new. What an unexpected and strange, exciting development. And what's more, I beat my breath holding record. Fantastic! Thank you for your aid, my valued ally. We'll have to try wrestling with our entire body sometime to see if the results are similar. Dahlia strides away, taking a little part of you with her. That's fine, though. You've got a little part of her, too. You gain plus two boldness and plus one charm. Let's bring the storm to That was a lot of reading. Camp. That was. <laughs> um... I'll go to HQ. Yep. Oh, I love her. I love her outfit. Yeah. At Day in Monsters Guts, they teach you how to use the stars and trees bark to find your way when you get lost. On the internet. <laughs> As a test, coach leaves you in the middle of the internet. You easily get lost. Before you know it, you're watching the Spanish synchronized swimming team perform a routine based on Stairway to Heaven. You don't earn the orientation while the while in the internet badge, 
but you definitely gain plus two creativity from watching such a beautiful display of skill. You've spent the last five minutes following Damien around, hearing tales of his exciting exploits, but staring at his butt more than you're actually listening. That's weird. It really locks you into one character. It does, yeah. The last game wasn't like that. It kind of had the option to, like, kind of go for different people. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why I can never go back to Rome, and why I have beef with all of the village people except for the cop, which is weird, because in real life, I often punch cops. Okay. Brad! Oh! I should show you the badge he sent me after I sent him a video of me singing YMCA while burning down a series of YMCAs. I can never find anything in my camp bag. My dad sent me with so much extra stuff that I can't imagine I'd ever need while camping. <sighs> I mean, a tent, a sleeping bag, a compass? When would I ever use any of that? Huh? Wait, what's this? It looks like a flashlight, but instead of a light bulb, there's just a fleshy looking open mouth. My dad's must have put this in here for me. But why? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh dear. You think that maybe while the Levees were packing Damien's equipment, they dropped some ahem, equipment of their own by complete accident. <laughs> I'm a pro camper! Is it maybe a utensil? It has a mouth. Maybe I'm supposed to use it to pre-chew my food before pouring it into my own mouth. That's disgusting. Nope! You can't traumatize Damien by telling him he found his dad's sex toy, but you need to think of a valid non-eating usage and fact. I kept oh getting <laughs> I kept getting rejection endings in this game. I was hoping for a bit less realism. Oh. Oh no! Where is this fucking Emergency pocket friends? No, no. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, let's do the pocket friend because okay. that's hilarious. Okay. Brad! Ooh, a pocket friend. Of all the flashlight shaped things a pocket can contain, a friend is one of the most badass. Friends are almost as metal as enemies. Damien presses some buttons on the flashlight and the mouth begins to move and vibrate. Oh god. Speak up, friend! I can't hear you emotionally validating me! Damien presses more buttons and, to your eternal surprise, the friend does indeed begin to talk. But its vocabulary seems to be limited. You're a naughty boy. <laughs> what? No, I'm not. How dare you? I'm the best boy. I'm the number one demon son. I'm not naughty. Oh, yes. <laughs> Fuck off. No! I just said no! Don't argue with me, you stupid fuck hammer! Give it to me, big boy! Fight me, dude! If you what, my lunch money? You can't be my friend if you're gonna bully me for my lunch money. That's what I do to my friends, not what friends do to me. Fuck me! Deeper! Faster! Fuck me so good! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Oh yeah! Sex things! Let's do them! Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was the new pocket friend just hitting on me this whole time? Was it negging me? Lame! That's such a fucking bummer. I hate when people follow me around and pretend to be my friend, but really they're just trying to get in my tight demon pants. <laughs> Anyone who wants sex with me better tell me right off the bat. I'm sure you think the same way because we're such good friendly buds. Right, pal? Such good platonic friends. Damien's bummed out by the pocket friend's betrayal, and you're bummed out that you haven't revealed your true motives to Damien earlier. Because apparently he's now going to view you as a deceptive creep with ulterior motives. Oh no. Oh, no. Which you are, but you try really hard.
hard not to actively acknowledge that this sudden reminder of your skis robs you of negative two fun and negative one creativity. Oh no. Oops. Everybody choose something um, bad. Say your choice out loud to the other players before clicking. Uh, Elon Musk. <laughs> Donald Trump. Okay. You ever built society on a desert island and you can totally ban the bad thing from this new society of yours? Play orders based on what you'd prefer to ban. <laughs> oh. Those are pretty good. Yeah. Or we could just hit random. Whatever. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's ride the lightning! Mm. Let's go to the dome. The dome? Yeah. Okay. I'm chubby! Mm. Today at the Camp Dome, the game is Charades Extreme. <laughs> It's just regular charades, but apparently they love to stick extreme onto any classic game. It's your turn, and you get the third times the charm. Third is easy to convey by just using your fingers. But charm is harder. You get your team to guess it right, you act as- or to get to get your team to guess it right, you act as if you were more charming than you really are. <laughs> oh. You manage to do that, gain plus two charm by playing that role, and bring your team to victory. Hooray! You return to your tent for some alone time after all the drama, but you should have known drama would follow you to your tent. You see Damien punching everything. Gah! Ah, fucking mosquitoes! Why don't you suck the blood out of my fists? The mosquitoes, which you now really are realizing, or what Damien is actually trying to punch, seem more happy to oblige. They swarm all over Damien's furious hands. And all over everything else, including your attractive face, which immediately gets punched by Damien. Huh? Oh. Whoa, is someone there? My punch sense is tingling. Hey, noob. Oh, it's you, Suzanne. I didn't see you there because I was blinded by my rage at these stupid mosquitoes! Seriously, I hate these little fuck buttons. They think they can just come over here and steal my blood? And I didn't even know they had fists, but it looks like one of them punched you in the face. <laughs> so not only are they stealing my blood, they're stealing my whole thing! <sighs> The worst part is I can't do anything about them. Camp Director Miss Weaving confiscated my mosquito killing machine gun because it exceeded the maximum number of machine guns allowed at camp. <laughs> <laughs> All I have left is this stupid mosquito spray, but it turns out it's mosquito stun spray, which just made them immune to skin cancer. What? Fight me, dude! Or maybe it wasn't the spray? Maybe the mosquitoes are in league with the sun. I should have killed that solar son of a bitch when I had the chance! <laughs> maybe I can kill them by shooting blood out of my eyes, or shooting harpoon out of my harpoon gun, or shooting harpoons out of my eyes! Oh dear, it seems like Damien's discovered an experimental new level of murderous rage. You better find a way to rid him of these mosquitoes, because you're the only one who should be allowed to bite through spicy red skin. Feel Damien's blood back from mosquitoes. Mosquitoes can't stand the smell of blood. Replace his blood with essential oils! Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> that feels like a bad move. <laughs> I'm just terrible with this shit, though. Mm. Um, we, yeah, let's steal the blood back. Okay. That's crazy enough to work! Oh, are you saying? You crazy son of a bitch, I'm in! And I know just the guy. Damien leaves 
leads you through a false tent into a secret sub-basement past a password door and into an underground speakeasy gambling den chop shop laundromat. You're greeted by a writhing ball of fingers and a tank top smoking a cigar. Damien LeVay, it says somehow. I didn't know you were still alive. <laughs> Not for a lack of trying, Jimmy Fingers. Listen, I'm putting a crew together, and I need a hand, if you know what I mean. Too bad, says Jimmy Fingers. I'm all thumbs. But I'm... <laughs> Come on, Jimmy, one last job. What would Delilah say if she... Alright, alright, you devil, what's the job? A casino, a bank, some kind of bank-casino hybrid? <sighs> Even better. This time we're stealing all of my blood back from the mosquitoes that bit me at summer camp. All of the blood. From all of the mosquitoes? Are you telling me? That's right. I'm talking about a classic Transylvania hot tub, a Seth Brundle, and a reverse reverse Romanian Wilkinson. <laughs> A look of awe creeps across Jimmy's fingers. You crazy son of a bitch, I'm in. One montage set to upbeat jazz music later, you've gathered one hacker, one demolitions expert, and one finger man. <laughs> All right, says in underscore. <laughs> Oh, underscore. It's what like bleed speak underscore. Oh, it's lead speak. But it just I didn't says underscore. See the U before the N. <laughs> <laughs> the leprechaun hagger, while licking a lollipop to indicate her youthful preciousness. What's the plan, Big D? Way ahead of you, Junior. Jimmy, you'll parachute down from a helicopter while underscore disables the security cameras from the van. Security cameras. Says Bill Murray, <laughs> star of Groundhog Day slash Demolitions expert. Mosquitoes don't have security cameras. I actually watched that movie recently. Oh, <laughs> speaking of Groundhog Day, I didn't know that there were multiple groundhogs. I thought there was. I thought there was just one. No, Puxatawney Phil is a collective. No, I mean like, there's. There's a separate Canadian groundhog with a different name that I don't remember. Oh. Uh, that one was found dead. Oh god. They like went to collect him and apparently he'd been dead for a while. Oh my god. I, I don't know. <laughs> okay then. So they were just like, uh, no prediction this year. Right. <laughs> That's right, Bill, they don't, which is why you're going to set some up with dynamite inside them. That's all well and good, says Jimmy Fingers, but how are we actually going to get the blood from the mosquitoes? Oh, that? I already stole it while we were putting this team together. The plan was just a distraction. What a twist, says Underscore. Damien, you genius, you've done it again. We, uh, we still get a share of the blood, right? Says so, the um, film actor Bill Murray. I, uh, need it for something. We're like masters of survival! Oh, yeah, blood for everybody. Especially you, Suzanne. You're the real mastermind here. We've always wanted some of Damien's blood, and this was definitely the most straightforward way to get it. We gained plus two boldness and plus one fun. Let me check a walkthrough first. Uh, I'm gonna go to the manor. Ghastly fanfic. While exploring the haunted manor, you find an enchanted skull who speaks riddles. His voice makes your ears bleed. You decide to name him Sparky and put him on your keychain as a fun pet. He tells you all sorts of cool things, like beware the tides of Venus, and if you meet a guy named Lenny at Costco, don't give him twenty dollars. <laughs> Sparky also tells you exactly when and how you'll die. Apparently it's gonna involve a lot of mozzarella sticks. You gain plus two boldness for gaining that force. <laughs> that sounds like the way to go. Yeah. None of that gets you any closer to banging your campmates, though, which is why you're so relieved to find Dahlia shortly after. She appears to be thinking? Uh... 
harpoon gun, baby powder, tank of compressed helium, what am I missing? Hey! Oh hey Zoe, behold my latest gambit in my all out campaign to have the best summer ever. You see, one key component of an optimal summer is an amazing tent and an amazing tent needs amazing tent supplies. I've already packed all the essentials, a grill for cooking my tent steaks, a snuggly teddy bear so I can keep my biceps toned by squeezing it tight. <laughs> And of course, a bag of live snails. I'm sure I don't even need to explain that one. But I just can't shake the feeling that I'm missing something. If I'm missing something, there's a chance that my tent will be... So scrawny! Suboptimal. I can't allow that to happen. But what could it be? I've already got a cooler full of spare organs and a spiked dog collar in case I find a dog. <sighs> Maybe I need a hand mirror for starting campfires and checking out my look. No, that didn't interfere with my tent's laser group. I'm really stumped, but you look like a mon monster with a lot of camping stuff. Maybe you can help. Dolly is gullible enough to believe you, you camping sav savage. She's probably got bigger problems. Well, well, here goes nothing. No one thinks about the tent's well being. Bring a tent for the tent in case the tent gets cold. <laughs> Everyone knows the survival setup isn't complete without someone to share it with. I think the tent needs a tent. So you can tent, tent, needs a tent. while you tent. <gasps> Inception. Damn it. Dang it. Of course, I've been so self-centered. I never considered how the tent might feel. Uh. I mean, what if my poor tent were to freeze to death and die? I don't want to sleep in a rotting tent corpse. I'll let a tent tent for my tent right away. You're a handsome genius, Zoe. Satisfied with your success, you head back to your own tent to pick out some cute underwear for when you and Dolly inevitably bang later. <laughs> when you return, however, Dolly appears none too pleased. You're a spineless, pale, pathetic lot! No, I see... <laughs> that was just a line from... From let's get down to business <laughs> from Milan. Okay. Now I see why people don't pitch tents for their tents. My tent has been spoiled rotten. Uh, no sooner did it get its precious tent tent than it started begging for tent food. And did tent hamburgers and tent fries satisfy it? No, then it wanted a tent smartphone with a tent unlimited plan. It didn't say it of course, but I could see the way it looked at me sullenly with that pouty rain fly. Uh, now it's demanding I let it leave the campsite to go meet up with a sexy TP it matched with on tent tenter. I had to draw the line somewhere. I mean, this is a survival situation. There's no time for snogging. But not when even let me inside. It's throwing a tent tent per tantrum. Tent tent tantrum. Ha <laughs> ha! You're failing at summer. What am I supposed to do? All my tent supplies are inside that stupid spoiled tent. I never should have listened to your advice. You suggest letting the tent open to get at the supplies, but that just proves that to Dolly how cool and unfeeling you really are. What's more, Dolly seems to think that camping and getting frisky are mutually exclusive. Getting frisky was like the whole reason you came camping. Now you've really got to rethink your life choices. You think you think so hard you lose minus two boldness and minus one one. Okay. Everybody choose a Those movie. Say your choice out loud to the other players before clicking. Have you seen Bullet Train yet? But, but. I have like no movie experience. Okay. Uh, you should watch. You should watch Bullet. It's really good. Uh, it's like Brad Pitt and some other actors. It's like a. It's. It's like a heist movie, but there's like five of them going on at the same time. Hmm. Okay. But it all takes place on a bullet train. It's a really good movie. Okay. Anyway, I picked that one. I pick Clueless because it's my favorite. Okay. Player order is decided based on the likelihood that thousands of years from now, archaeologists will use that movie to explain how society functioned in the 21st century. Ah, Clueless. It's definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready for some spooky stories. Oh, I can't fire. Mothman. What? There's a Mothman. Oh. What, what do we do here? I guess you get to pick who to sit next to. Or you can sit by yourself. I mean, I guess I should sit with Baby and the main floor. Okay. Who's it having me? You look across the campfire and see Damien and Milo playing backgammon. A secret backgam backgammon champion yourself, you just have to play the winner. But as soon as you arrive... Gah! Wow. 
flipping the board when you lose, what a surprise. If you just kept playing, you'd get good soon, uh, soon enough. Loser! No! I don't want to keep playing. This game is stupid and the board cheated. <laughs> you realize you always do this, right? <sighs> do what? No, I don't. I always keep playing spicy and unpredictable. What do I always do? You're wrong! <laughs> You do try new things, explore new hobbies, new sides of yourself, but one fall and you're back to the old crime and arson and anger issues thick. What's that about, buddy? Huh? Well, I just, you know, crimes and arson are kind of... Sorry, you huh? Jim, Jim interrupted me. Um, well, I just, you know, crimes and arson are kind of... My thing, you know? At Spooky High, that was pretty much all I did. Unless people knew my secret sides. I've already toned that way down at Camp Spooky. What if my reputation suffers? I'm Damien LeFay, bitches. Legendary bad boy. <laughs> but here's... But here there's just... Generally less crime and arson to do. And also... I know I do a good job at hiding this, but... Hashtag fail. <laughs> you do not do a good job at hiding it. I know that. We all know that. We tried to set up a tent. Er, you tried to set up a tent using a katana. Uh -huh. Exactly. I didn't even stab anyone with it. What if I'm losing my edge? What if people stop liking me? Hmm. I'm sure they won't. But you... Don't you think people will love you even more when they find out about your secret passion for makeup? Or your adorable relationship with your dads? And even if they didn't, who cares? Life is about finding what makes you happy, not what you think will make other people happy. In fact, if Camp Spooky Damien ha already has more dimension than Spooky High Damien, imagine what after Camp Spooky Damien will be like. We need to brainstorm your next evolution. Ooh, you love brainstorming and interfering in other people's lives. <laughs> you know Damien's next move? A show. Crimes, arson, and makeup, but rocking an exciting new facial hairstyle, new beard, and new man. After summer camp, get ready for the ultimate evolution, or should we say quadruple revolution? <laughs> Make your skating Damien! <laughs> you know, as much as I love the idea of figure skating Damien, probably gonna have to be the stereotypical demon with the beard. Is that crazy enough to work? Oh. Fuck, yeah! Now we're talking! That's the kind of new experience I'd totally be open to! <laughs> things you're most known for, plus one secret passion that you, you're already starting to be known for. Nuh-uh! New facial hair is an exciting new adventure, and totally counts as switching it up. <laughs> Don't you see? It's actually almost impossible for me to grow facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because my chiseled jawline and cheekbones are so rock solid that my hair- that the fair hall- Careful, can't burst through that toughness to grow properly. Mm -hmm. As an ins uh, as an aspiring hairstylist, you must know that's not how that works. <laughs> arson! All I know is that nothing's better than arson, except for arson while rock rocking a sweet Rasputin beard. Or. Or, I could rock some mutton chops while mutton chopping up is safe during a bank heist. I'm a pro! Or sport a sporty handlebar mustache while unsportingly removing the handlebars from a bike, thus sabotaging a race and winning millions of dollars? I can't be seen with you. I'm no longer comfortable having my brand associated with yours. Goodbye, everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> I just don't understand your brilliance, Suzanne. Your vision of my facial hair is far beyond its time. 
Whoa, you're a pro! You are a goatee Nostradamus. Also, what kind of facial hair do we think Nostradamus had? Because I could wear that to predict my next actions. I'm pretty sure that predicting your own actions just means planning, but why bother correcting Damien at this point? Instead, the two of you debate what facial hair would be most flattering, which gives you an opportunity to stare intently at his face all night without coming across as creepy. We'll live in the dream. The goateed, mutton-chopped handlebar stash, crime and arson and makeup, but with a mustache doing dream. Let's read some creepypasta. <laughs> I, I want to sit with Mothman. Hello, hello. Oh. So <laughs> Hi there, Zoe. I have a business proposition for you. Well, if you had a nickel for every time a friend of yours proposed a business to you uninvited. Ah! My idea is this, a magazine about Camp, camp Spooky. It will feature stories about our fellow campers' lives, photography of our fellow campers frolicking, salacious details about our fellow campers' innermost secrets. Okay. Papa needs some gossip! It's genius, Snow. The only problem is I need some groundbreaking gossip to get my publication off the ground. Something the other gossip reporters haven't gotten their greedy hands on yet. Would you know anything for chance? Eh, fuck it. You've always wanted to give an interview, and this might be your only chance. Let's gossip. Oh! This is a negative thing for another plan. <laughs> oh shit. Okay. Although I can pick myself or something? Because who doesn't like starting rumors about themselves? Yeah. I don't care. Whatever. Experimental ska. Dream snail racing astro production alien fueled karaoke. Alien fueled karaoke sounds like me. <laughs> I want to go with experimental ska. Okay. Uh, incorrigible sexiness, <laughs> distrust of modern medicine, contagious after terminal stupidity. I mean, the bottom two are very apt for me. <laughs> you know, with contagious laughter. Type in a fun summertime. Oh no. Gossip! <laughs> Amazing! This will be our cover story for our debut issue. Sorry with the saucy secrets. Farewell! Yeah, We're going to do more sleuthing for stories. Catch you later. Your hot, thick, juicy gossip makes its way around the campfire in record time. I guess. Life oh. is strange and beautiful. I like this guy. Hey, I just heard something really strange about Suzanne. Listen to this. She was He's a... cute. Yeah. She was apparently a participant in a super weird pharmaceutical experiment. <laughs> They were testing a new drug that could possibly cure contagious laughter, and of course, Suzanne was the perfect guinea pig. Oh. It was a month-long trial, and Suzanne had to deal with lots of bizarre side effects. Uh. Like running nose, excessive smirking, permanently perfect skin, and a sudden obsession with experimental ska. <laughs> Ultimately, the drug was a success, but it's still not FDA approved. But hey, that's never stopped anyone before. Huh. <laughs> but the funniest part is, and you didn't hear this from me, the drug gave Suzanne a perm permanent anime fetish. <laughs> Oh, that was gonna be permanent no matter what. Yeah. Seriously, if you even have some, even so much as much as mentioned anime in front of her, I heard she nuts immediately. <laughs> but who am I to judge? So I guess do with that info what you will next time you see her. Your Oops. super salacious rumor earns Suzanne. Oh, I gave you a stat boost. Yeah. Plus the creativity. Oh. It's probably a, oh, it's a mini game, but we can't really do it in this before sharing a controller. <laughs> Could it be like that? Welcome, welcome. You new here? Don't fret. Let me explain how this works. I will prepare you a drink. The drink of the day. You may choose to drink that one. But if you're not interested, you're lucky. There's a mystery box with a second option. It could be better, it could be worse, but one thing is for sure, here it is. I love him. It, it's adorable. In these dreams, look, choose whatever you want, but I'm not responsible for whatever you put in your mouth. I'm a wizard in draining! For you to test my concoction is somewhere between kind and reckless. So, get ready, and good luck! Oh shit. Oh 
Pokemon. No idea if I got the recipe right. Wanna try it? Not so much. Otherwise, you always have the film straight up. Uh, uh, I'll take the box. The box, the box! Whiskey. Whiskey. The mystery box? So bold of you. Hope you're happy with it. No refunds. Yeah, I'm okay with that. My life's protected. What do you say? Will you take the drink of the day? Or would you prefer the mystery box? I'm gonna take the redacted. Yeah, no, totally. I was testing your common sense. And you passed. Your prize is the drink you chose. Behold! A potion that looks like whiskey. Its power is to taste and smell like whiskey. Nothing else. Bad. Nothing happened. <laughs> the Redacted has some weird powerful properties that stop anyone from being capable of acting using its real name. I think by drinking it, you absorb some of its properties. So I guess you're Redacted from now on. So mysterious. Cheers! <laughs> so hard to believe you drank that. Good luck, I guess. The Redacted. Okay, what? Sushi is delicious. Sushi. Sushi is good. Uh, boba tea. Heck yeah. Play orders decide based on the likelihood that society would survive if said good thing was completely wiped from existence. I feel like I sushi. Mean. Would. I feel like you can't get any sushi. Both you could live without. Just to be random. Yeah, that's right. Ooh, things are about to get stormy. Oh, I love her outfits. Yeah. While you're hiking through the woods, you accidentally step on a pile of leaves covering a massive hole. It was a trap. An evil goblin hunter. Is it a goblin who hunts someone, or is it a goblin who hunts, or someone who hunts goblins? You'll never know. Appears. They they were the one who put the trap there. This is it. You're done. You get ready to embrace death. But the goblin hunter only set the trap to get someone to help them to do their math homework. They'll only let you leave if you help them. You don't have any other option here. It's a bit boring, but you actually learn some useful calculus. You gain plus two smarts. Afterwards, you manage to convince Damien that back massages keep away mosquitoes, and you're really good at getting after it, Lynn. Hmm. Hey, uh... Has that weird chuckling lamp always been over there? What weird li- Oh, wow, okay. <sighs> There's something weird about this lamp. I just can't put my finger on what. <laughs> Arson! Well, in the words of the great Mahatma Gandhi, when in doubt, set it on fire. You're pretty sure that's not what Gandhi said, and you tell Damien, so. Really? Huh? I tried to read a biography of Gandhi once, but I couldn't understand it, so I set it on fire. I thought that was the lesson the book was trying to teach me. <laughs> that was about five minutes ago. The book is still on fire, actually. In fact, it's what I was planning to use to burn this lamp. Watch! <laughs> no need, Damien. The only person who's been burned here is you! By my impeccable disguise! Whoa! That's crazy! Oh, Counselor Flodge? You were the lamp the whole time? Cameron Orenthal Flodge! Pretty cool, huh? Ugh. Only if you think lying is cool. Which I do, but only when I do it, not when people do it to me. Huh? I wasn't trying to lie to you, Damien. I was trying to teach you a lesson about the wonders of camouflage. Get real. 
Camouflage is for stupid babies who are too lame to solve their problems with violence. Sneak level 100. <laughs> oh, so it's violence you're interested in, eh? I'll have you know that in the heady days of my youth, I once disguised myself as a baguette in order to stab the French prime minister. Hmm? But France doesn't have a prime minister. They have a president. <laughs> Only because I stabbed the prime minister. That just might work. I didn't know camouflage could be used for stabbing. This changes everything. But I still don't like it. It was pretty hard to blend in when you have such blemishes. A blemishless crimson red skin. <laughs> don't worry about that, son. I can change my skin to any color I want, and I'm a master of disguise. So clearly skin color doesn't matter here. All we need to do is find the perfect way for you to blend into your surroundings. Is this where, is this where his costume comes in? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, oh, you've got an idea. Oh. Get a high-powered job in the fashion industry and make red the in color for the season and next season and every other season forever. <laughs> I'm Damien and a giant bowl of... Right, let's do the fashion one. Okay. Stealth mode! A classic technique. It's like I say in my best-selling disguise handbook. If you can't change how you look, completely alter your surroundings to match how you look. Proud of you! You're a real hero, Suzanne, volunteering for this dangerous job. Here, I'll help disguise you as a fashion icon. <laughs> Counselor Flodge disguises you by putting you, uh you by putting a beret on your head and dressing you in a trash bag with armholes. Thankfully, all fashion is, is an elaborate lie. So when you apply for CEO of Vogue, everybody assumes you're too fashionable to even comprehend, and you are hired immediately. It's like that one fashionista from regular show. What? Once hired, you discover that Vogue is the most powerful institution in the modern world, controlling not only fashion, but the economy, all world governments, and even people's thoughts. That's terrifying. You declare the next issue's theme to be red, and herald it as the most iconic color of all time. Then you make the next six months' issue's red theme just to be safe. And just to be extra safe, you use Vogue's vast resources to implant microscopic mind control devices in all the world's water, making red everyone's favorite color. <laughs> and also destroying their abilities to see other ones. Hooray for fashion! Everyone starts wearing red all the time and painting everything red and stabbing each other because they like the way the red blood flows out of their veins. Jesus. Oh god. Green is cancelled. Everyone agrees that it's actually just another shade of red. You make plans for red to absorb two to five more colors in the next fiscal year. Nice work. Red! Hey, Suzanne. Thanks for mind-controlling everyone in the entire world in order to make it easier for me to hide. Now that nobody can actually tell the difference between red and green, I can blend into the forest and nobody has any idea I'm there. I've stabbed like 18 people. <laughs> oh, you're a pro! Also, I've been voted Monster Magazine's sexiest monster alive forever. You're the best. Hell yeah. Promise to celebrate with Damien in a romantic manner, just as soon as you can tell him apart from the background. Meanwhile, you gain plus two smarts and plus one charm. <laughs> Let me take a walk through first. Oh, yeah, it's redacted. Yep. Uh, I'm gonna go to the dome. Typical bloody camp dome battle royale. While you're hiding to catch breath, a severed fist flies through the air and lands in your lap. You unfold it. The fist was holding a tarnished silver locket containing the photo of a loved one, likely waiting for the hand's former owner to return home safely. You toss that behind you and also find a crumpled up coupon redeemable for plus two charm in Pedro's pastrami paradise. Rad! Thanks, mysterious hand! Later, you see Arabi and Dolly training together for the next dome games. They both, they're both covered in blood, and the ground is littered with fists and well, fouled bodies. It's terrifying, but they both look extremely hot covered in blood. This. Is. Camp! <laughs> Hell yeah, Carnage, what's our next training exercise, fellow warrior? Fuck yeah! 
my all-time favorite, the three-legged race. We'll crush the next four enemies at Camp Rival Camp, all with our instincts epic. Fuck yeah. Aravi grabs a rope to her rope to tie her leg to Dahlia's, but Dahlia blushes and shies away. Oh well, Robbie, I didn't realize that you wanted to get more serious. What are you talking about, you muscular juggernaut? Well, it seems like you're just suggesting some kind of fusion. Uh. Call me old-fashioned, but I take fusion very seriously. It's the most erotic method of teamwork. Oh. Oh, I get it. Listen, Dahlia, you're totally right that fusion can be sexual, but it doesn't have to be. Chillax. Yep, it's true. Just look at me and Aravi. The bond between curse and curse is technically a form of fusion, and we're totally platonic BFFs. Ho oh, ho! Admirable! Whoa, platonic fusion? That sounds awesome and powerful and emotionally nourishing. I know, right? <sighs> okay, we totally have to do this fusion. We're already unstoppable, but once we're fused, we'll be un-unstoppable. Free XP for everyone! Oh uh, yeah, baby. Time for some platonic leg stuff. <laughs> no, wait. Fusing can be very intense. We need to make sure our friendship is as strong as possible, and our hearts and in our legs before we do this. <laughs> that totally makes sense. My buddy Ralph fused with an acquaintance he didn't know that well. Long story short, the fusion went wrong and they accidentally switched buttholes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, first up, friendship strengthening, and after that, platonic three-legged fusion. Totally on board with this incredibly logical train of thought, but how will you strengthen Dolly and Arabi's friendship so they can fuse properly? Raid the most badass friendship bracelet ever. Arrange a casual yet platonic date for the girls' legs so they can get to know each other better. Friendship bracelet. Friendship bracelet. You depart on a holy quest to forge the most powerful friendship bracelet of all time. You craft the bracelet in the fires of Mount Gurth using ancient threads of Unicorn Man. You strike it with your sacred crafting hammer until your hands are callous and bloody. You also make sure to pick pretty colors and even sew in everyone's initials. Ugh. Whoa, it's pretty dope actually. Power up! It looks so powerful and enticing. Wait, are we sure this isn't cursed? Because I've been tricked before. <laughs> Don't worry, Robbie, this is no curse. I feel it in my warrior soul. It's time to fuse platonically. We loop the friendship bracelet onto Dolly and Robbie's ankles, completing the platonic fusion. Dear gods, the power of friendship is pumping through our veins. Our legs have become our leg. <sighs> the three-legged race is only the beginning. With three legs, we can hold the camera with unparalleled levels of steadiness. Play of the game! We can finally play Mega Soccer. <laughs> and pretend our third leg is a big penis. <laughs> Tally, we can even handle the most terrifying test of interpersonal coordination. Preparing a plate of spaghetti. <laughs> Wait a sec, you two could have shared spaghetti before you fused. You could have been doing that this whole time. <sighs> but could we have eaten spaghetti with our legs tied together? Ha, huh, it's a whole new level of intimacy. You watch Dolly and Arabi split a plate of spaghetti. Dolly handles the knife and Arabi handles the fork. You all completely forget about the race and your excitement to eat pasta together. But it's so adorable that you gain plus two charm and plus one boldness anyway. I need to drink water. <laughs> Everyone choose a fictional character. Fred Flintstone. Okay. Player order decided based on which character you Oh yeah, you no, I don't want Fred Flintstone near me at all. <laughs> Walk through first. <laughs> oh, that's dope. Spend the day learning new skills with the masters with the monster scouts in order to earn badges. You earn a badge for healing wound only using the bark of a tree. You earn a badge for writing poems in iambic pentameter. You earn a badge for building a blackberry using only real blackberries. Nice. Completing all those unexpected and probably useless lessons to learn you earn you plus two creativity. <laughs> you link up with Dolly afterwards. She practices headbutting rocks while you give her pointers on headbutting rocks. Get off my land! Hey, stop headbutting my rocks. Your rocks? Well, if they're yours, how did my forehead feel like get all over them, huh? <laughs> Sorry, Toots, those rocks and, and that precious forehead bl blood belong to me. I've purchased camps for you. Wahaha. <sighs> yes, be still my evil laugh. What could a fiend like you possibly want with a wonderful high mortality rate summer camp like this? Everyone loves a good shopping mall. Nothing at all. That's why I'm demolishing Camp Spooky and replacing it with something much more evil. A suburban shopping mall. Uh... But no Camp Spooky means no classic summer camp experiences. And no classic summer camp experiences means no best summer ever. 
This is camp! I won't allow it. I'll defeat you in glorious single combat. When I'm through with you, your broken bones will have broken bones. Ha ha ha! You think more violence can stop me? Please, if you break my bones, I'll just buy replacement bus for destiny millennials. Capitalism always wins! <laughs> Your physical attacks are useless against me, Dahlia. The true source of my power is capitalism itself. Capitalism has no bones. Alright, I have to go run an errand real quick. Someone told me there's still a rainforest that hasn't been burned down yet. I'll be right back with the bulldozers. Oh, man. No, I can't let him win. I'm allergic to letting other people win. He's right, though. My fists are useless against him, unless I defeat capitalism first. Uh... How can I attack something that has no bones? Apparently, capitalism must have a weak point. If only I knew what it was. Ooh, ooh, you have an idea. Capitalism's weak point is... It's genitals. <laughs> Capitalism depends on the void in our souls in which we fill our... with consumer goods. That it's weak to fill the void. I don't go with its genitals. Uh. Damn it. <laughs> you want to punch capitalism, an abstract concept that doesn't have any half bones, in the genitals? Your spineless, pale, pathetic lot! That's so dishonorable. It's already at a disadvantage because of the no bones. Only a truly cowardly soul would punch a boneless adversary in the genitals. <sighs> Plus, did capitalism consent to being punched in the genitals? Because of it not, yikes. That really says more about you than it does about capitalism. I never condone genital punching, just like I don't condone sand kicking performance enhancing spells or teabagging. Ha <laughs> ha! You're failing it, Summer! I'm ashamed of you, Redact. Your cravenness has punched me in the genitals of my heart. Oh no. no. <laughs> Punching genitals is a dishonorable look. I'll show her by whacking yourself on the genitals with a crowbar. <laughs> Ow, that fucking hurts. Apparently this is news to you, but getting a crowbar to the genitals sucks. Aww. Ow, writhing in pain while clutching your genitals. The classic response of a person horrified by their own wretched cowardice. You try to explain that it's really more of a response to the crowbar you just joined yourself with, but all that comes out is sheer shit. <laughs> How dare you say that about my parents? I didn't know you even spoke to Monica. You haven't seen the last of me! You're lucky you're such a coward. I'll spare you because I don't want any of your blood to get on me and set my heroes to watch yourself for deck. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great. The networks are gonna love this footage of you dunking yourself with that crowbar. I was on Forbes 30 under 30 inches. You know what? Forget them all for a bit. How would you like to smack yourself at the crotch on the Tonight Show? I'll be your manager. I'm gonna be rich. You would not like to smack yourself in the crotch on The Tonight Show, but it's that or let Camp Spooky be bulldozed, so you take one for the team. Or really, by the time you're done touring all, all the late night shows, several dozen for the team. Camp Spooky is safe for now, but at the cost of minus two fun and minus one sparks and probably your ability to procreate. Make way for the incoming storm! Blake? Yeah. Oh no. Oh yeah. <laughs> That day you go diving to see what's at the bottom of the lake. You find a comic book. You pick it up, but it's so interesting you stay there reading it. This is bad, since you cannot hold your breath indefinitely. You rush to the surface, but before getting there, you you drown a little and some lake water gets into your mouth. Gross. You swallow some weird stuff that was in the lake water, like a whole jellyfish and must be fun? What was that doing there? You find Damien standing on the pier, throwing matches into the water, saying some pretty creative swears. Good. Maybe eagle tits! I came to this camp to kick ass and start dryers, but how am I supposed to start any fires here when there's all this bullshit water for people to throw on them? <sighs> I mean, that's what I was thinking, but then I had an idea. I'm gonna set the lake up on fire. I'll teach them to stay sick here and all non-combustible. Fight me, dude! That's right, right, you fucking lake. I'm looking at you, and I'm looking at you because I intend to set you on fire! Oh, what? Are you just reacting to me like that? You what? Uh, you don't have to fucking thing more! <laughs> <laughs> You think that just because a small hydrogen is already in the evolved fertile energy reacting with oxygen, you're not not like a bubble? Well, I um, don't you're right. You see what I'm not going to get your two hands in? I can't give up hope. I have to go to what's going on today. It took us a lot of fun there, and it's not time to do it. Yeah, all, all I need is a little help. I know this is a pretty intimate request, but uh, you can help me set this lake on fire. What? You have double eye? What? what?
Why would you have the body on? Hmm. I don't see another audio source. I, I don't know. Am I just being that loud and it's going through your headphones too? I don't think that's the case anymore. I'll just turn it down a little bit. Say the thing? Ah, oh, I turned it down too low. Uh, let me double check something. Is my audio better than now? Better now? Okay. Weird. Yeah, maybe I was just being too loud. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> And luckily, you've got the perfect plan. <laughs> Humiliate the lake with the sick. Let's do that one. You sickest burn. Okay. No. You step up to the lake and hit it with the sickest burn you can think of. You think you're so hot that you're just a fucking lake. One time I was swimming in you and I peed so much I actually pooped a little. And then I left it there. So hot. Hmm. What the fuck was that? Says the, says the lake in a booming disembodied voice. That burn was weaker than your jawline, you fucking peasant. Go jerk off to one of your more interesting campmates before I come over there and get you wetter than I made your mom last night. <laughs> Whoa, that's crazy! <laughs> oh shit! The fuck are you staring at, Buttercup? Never seen a lake talk before? Or, I'll, or are you really that fucking thirsty? I'll give you something to drink, you fucking elbow. Ever hear the water cycle? Next time it rains, that pissy hook is coming right back down your throat, I swear to God. And you should have held on to that turd. At least then your head wouldn't be so fucking empty, bud. Figure it out. But you can't figure it out. You're too busy catching on fire because of how hard you've just been burned. Follow my lead! Whoa, whoa, you're on fire! We can still salvage this. Damien picks you up and chucks you in the lake, hoping you'll set it on fire. Instead, the lake drowns you like the chunk you are. <laughs> You're able to struggle free, coughing and gagging, but there's no question about who came out ahead in that interaction. You lose negative two, one, and negative one charm. I'm bad at having fun. <laughs> Everybody just something bad, so you're trying to sell that together. Let's just do random. Yeah. Now we're here to be talking at a talking otter who suddenly appeared one day offering you to take the bad thing away from your life and be making pasta every day. Yeah. Let's read some creepy pasta. You walk over to where She's actually cute. Yeah. You walk over to where Joy is relaxing with her book by the firelight, ready to ruin her privacy, but before you can sit down, Dolly appears with a laptop. <gasps> Joy, thank goodness you're not busy. I have something important to discuss with you. Can't I read in peace? Oh yeah, sure. I'm not busy at all with this book. I've been trying to finish since I got here and I'm only on page fifteen because people keep interrupting. Yeah, great. Okay, I need you to be serious and stick with me for a moment. This is very important. <laughs> Dolly opens the laptop to a PowerPoint presentation. It's got a rainbow gradient background with lots of text transitions, and it's titled Improving the Coven by Dahlia Aquino. <laughs> you see, Joy, it is my duty as a coven member. You are not part of the coven! <laughs> <laughs> to always keep an eye on the coven's performance and look for ways to improve it. It's one of the benefits of having a member with a military background. No need to thank me. Ugh. 
Don't worry, I won't. Ugh, so weak. Now let's start with efficiency. I've analyzed lots of the coven's previous advantages, and they always rely on a magic spell or artifacts everything day at the last second. What a plot twist. Well, yeah, of course, that's how you build suspense. Otherwise, there's no dynamism to the, how the plot unfolds. <sighs> True, but it's a waste of resources. I propose that we make one super spell artifact that we can use in all situations. I've suggested a magic bazooka. Not happening. Um, I'm not doing that. Next up, the dress code. You, Faith, and Hope have got the black and purple color scheme down, but your outfits are also different. Make some space for Dahlia! Therefore, I propose we put out a standard issue coven uniform. Preferably something camel and that will show off my rip rippling abs. <sighs> a uniform? No way. Haven't you ever heard of expressing individuality? <sighs> what? Soldiers don't need to express individuality. Joy, they just need to take orders and look hot doing so. Joy is rolling eyes so hard that you've worried she's going to have a stroke. Maybe you could suggest a coven improvement to an argument? After much analysis has been concluded that the coven needs to be 80% more anime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anime. So muscular! Yes. yes, oh my god, why didn't I think of that scene? <sighs> Wait, what? That literally makes no sense. How can we be more anime? Why would we even want to? Dahlia Kino, ready to fight! Because anime has great technical value, Joy. The lessons therein have made me the bluff, buff blue goddess I am today. Everything in anime is militarily significant. <gasps> like magical core outfits. If you're in battle and you really need to impress or spook your enemy, just do a super sparkling full body transformation into a flashy outfit. Ugh. Um, no thanks. I don't condone using magic to show off or wearing brick colors. Uh... You guys could also benefit from super anime weapons. I'm talking giant size, allies that can transform into guns, robotic cats that turn into a giant flying robots. Enough of this. That's all nonsense, Sally. Nothing like that even exists, nor does it deserve to. Dahlia is here! Come on, Joy, give it a chance. I mean, you could at least give names to your special moves. What special moves? You know, like show-stopping moves that you bust out when all seems lost and you need to rally the audience? Like when you go to cast a spell, you could speak him. The coven is here to save the day! Cataclysmic coven smash. That would be so badass. We need to make the coven more anime right away. I'm out. Ah, uh, I'm out. Okay, bye! Okay, Joy, see you later. I'll have my new power plant ready to show you in no time. You're winning at summer! Hey Redacted, since you're the mastermind behind this plan, will you help me out? Which gift of Naruto running best illustrates the importance of this initiative? <laughs> I spend the rest of the evening helping Dolly polish her anime coven business plan. Joy is never gonna go for it, but it's fun nonetheless, and it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with Dolly. Alright, make some room! I want to sit with Mothman this time. Okay. Today we gather around this flame. Hello there, Suzanne. Come to write by the firelight as well. I'm writing a letter home to my parents. They've asked so many questions about camp. <clears throat> it's exhausting answering them all. Have you been brushing your antenna every day? Are you getting enough clothing fibers in your diet? Gossip! Suzanne heard any hot goss lately, and would she be so kind as to dish? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be rude and not answer them, would I? I don't suppose you know of anything I could write home about? <laughs> Damn, all your parents asked about was if you had enough pairs of socks. If it's gossip Mr. and Mrs. Man want, it's gossip they'll get. <laughs> We'll gossip about you because you gossiped about me. Okay. I need to be a stalker group. Yeah, that one. Okay. I'm photos of just Furby. Yeah. Okay. Uh, type in it, Furby. Delicious details. My mother is going to blush straight through to uh, through her fuzz. I can't wait to tell everyone in my family all about your story, Suzanne. Thanks. Your fellow campers are all hungry for that hot goss, and you soon hear your rumors spreading all over the place. Hey. Hey, have you heard about Redacted? No. Well, listen to this because you may not know them as well as you thought. Well. 
Apparently last year, Redacted was boarding a flight on an official Danny DeVito stalker group business. <laughs> what? When they were stopped by TSA. Yes, it's true. The TSA agent opened Redacted's suitcase and realized that they were trying to smuggle a baggie of nose candy hidden in a Furby onto the flight. I feel like that's a good place to hide that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Oddly enough, Redacted tried to convince the TSA agent to let them go by showing off their obscure Shrek trivia novel. Fortunately, it was enough to convince the TSA agent to allow them to board the flight with their sweet, sweet Furby. Mind blowing! It's pretty mind blowing, huh? I'd like to keep this info in mind next time, or I'd keep this info in mind next time you see Redacted out and about. <laughs> Your gossiping skills totally cause Redacted to gain plus two fun. Nice. I think these are just We're all both positive. terrible at having fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got your flasks. Weekend arrives, so it's time to visit Juan, the small magical Latino cat. Oh. Look who's here. Welcome to my bar. Really, I don't know who's in their right. Uh, I don't know who in their right mind would take such a risk. I guess you have more thirst than common sense. Anyway, check this drink out. Quite appealing, right? To know if I drink that, but the real question is, will you? What's it say? I can't even tell what it says. It looks like it says a beverage. Kinda. I also have this mystery box, because at this point, who knows what you'd drink? It also looks like, um, like a, spe a Speedo. I can't tell what I'm know. looking at. It, yeah. That, that's very weird. I don't, I don't, I'm gonna pick the mystery box. Manhattan. A mystery box? So bold of you! Hope you're happy with it. No refunds! Blue thighs. <laughs> My turn. Phobia shots? Ooh. Quite appealing, right? To know if I drink that, but the real question is, will you? I also have this mystery box, because at this point, who knows what you drink? I'll take the phobia shots because I'm a scaredy cat. Yeah, no, totally. I was testing your common sense. Can you pass? Your prizes? The drink you chose? Phobia shots? Let's do some phobia shots, yeah! You know what they say, if you can't overcome your fears, drink them. Cheers to you. Doing that surely is er, doing that is surely bold. <laughs> Electrifying. A Manhattan. Yeah, I turned an actual location into a drink. It's so fucking concentrated that everyone has the opportunity to gain plus one extra stat point at every location. Nice. You'll be the one with locations! Which mouth should I pour it into? <laughs> this is the part where I leave before you puke all over me. I chow. I think it's just chow, but I think it's just the upside down exclamation oh, point. yeah, the upside down. Sorry. I forget that upside down exclamation points are a thing, because mm. I did not take Spanish. Manner, a voice whispers from the malls in a frightening voice. Redacted, can't escape your fate, you'll soon gain boldness, and after that, something weird will happen to you. It could be great or terrible. You don't want something potentially terrible happening to you. You could stay, stay put to be sure you don't get extra boldness by the voice's prediction. 
<laughs> Look at you, trying to defy Destiny itself. That makes some bravery. Here, take plus three boldness. My boldness and charm are really high. A wall collapses and there's Dahlia with her fist out. Calculester stands sheepishly next to her. May I chime in? Friend Dahlia, there was a door a mere 36 centimeters from your, the impact point of your punch. Dahlia is here! So, we Akinos make our own doors. <clears throat> I respect your rich family history punching your way through walls. Mm -hmm. However, I feel it is my duty infor to inform you that you build the case existing doors is 3.1 times more efficient than punching through walls and reduces knuckle wear and tear. Such an honorable scout! This is why you're such a powerful ally, ally Calculester. I never would have thought of using doors on my own. Hey, let's try this one over here. Dolly opens the door to her left and a deluge of screaming tongues pour out. Neither she nor Calculister seems the least bit startled by this. Engaging camp module.exe. Friends Dahlia, I had no idea you two were incapable of fear. Bonding experience initiated. Nothing can scare Dahlia! What? No, I definitely experience fear. I'm just not afraid of a closet full of screaming tongues specifically. A healthy sense of fear is an important survival trait, and a necessary quality and a good leader. The fears include not being the best, exploding, and institutional racism. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ah, I see. I thought I had found someone else like me, but instead it seems I'm a, I'm both a poor facsimile of a living creature and a poor leader. Oh well. Chin up, my middle friend. It's gonna be okay. Error 404. I have no chin, and no it is not. <sighs> yes it is, because Redacted and I are going to teach you how to feel fear so you can become the great leader you were born to be. Mm -hmm. I was also not born. Hmm. So you can become the great leader you were made to be. Pretty sure Dolly is not going to be able to accomplish this monumental task on her own. You're going to need to step in. Luckily, you know just how to scare Calculester. Tell him this spooky story of Y2K. Take him to the, <laughs> take him to the digital haunted house known as the Dark Web. Jesus. That's a hard deal. Both are pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I want to go to the Dark Web. Error 404. I've heard of the dark web redacted. I've even been there. Alas, it has failed to scare me. Ha, huh, maybe Calculister has been to the dark web, but he can't possibly have seen the worst of it. It takes a truly depraved mind like yours to truly plunge the depths of the dark web. You whip out your laptop and show him what you mean. <gasps> Whoa, this page is offering to sell us drugs, and the drugs are actually just crushed up assault weapons. Doesn't that scare you, Calculister? Mm hmm. Sadly, all I feel is confusion the author's lack of punctuation. This page lets you buy a private army which you can use to literally massacre whoever you want. Just really go to town, I don't care. Spooky, right? I find it disturbing that the seller only accepts payment in Dogecoin, but beyond that, I feel nothing. What about this collection of horrifying JPEGs? Have you ever seen a man jerk off this many astronauts? It's insane. Lameness detected. It is wrong to kim kink shame, friend Dahlia. Astronauts should be permitted to enjoy being masturbated to, and some people find them very appealing. Uh. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it is I am sorry. I last shot because I was frustrated by my inability to experience. Oh no. Whoa! No, what are you doing? Ah! What? I thought you weren't afraid of the dark web. I am not, friend Dahlia. I am afraid because Redacted is accessing the dark web using Internet Explorer. <laughs> what, is that not how you're supposed to access the dark web? Apparently not, because just then some hackers take over your computer and transform it into a gun, which they used to try and mug you. Luckily, money isn't a stat in this game, so you lose nothing of real value. Meanwhile, Calculister has finally learned what it means to experience fear. Nice. You gain plus two boldness and plus one fun. I'm fully charged! Internet Explorer is notoriously vulnerable. The only one I haven't gone to is the one you went to. Oh, darn. Um... Now let's go back to HBO. That day in Monster Scouts, you make each other friendship bracelets. Except the Monster Scout leader pairs you randomly with your friendship bracelet recipients. So I guess Larry the Lich doesn't feel left out for having no friends. Oh. You get paired with Larry. Surprisingly, though, he's a great conversationalist, and he makes you a super heartfelt bracelet that imbues you with plus three creativity when you wear it. Larry sure is nice. Maybe there will come a day when he's cool enough to be your friend, or at least a romanceable summer fling option. But today is not that day. We we'll meet up with Damien to help him with what he claims is a charitable endeavor. Yo! 
I believe that all living creatures, great and small, deserve a fighting chance at life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's why I've been making these tiny magnifying glasses to give to apes. <sighs> I think they can fight fire with fire if, every, if anyone ever tries to use a magnifying glass to fuck them. I brought them the gift of flame, like Aunt Prometheus. And you know what happened to Prometheus, don't you? <laughs> Arson! He was worshipped as a hero of the inventor of the greatest of all art forms. Arson! No, he was chained to a rock. In a sexy way? No, in a horrifying torture where his liver was eaten every day way. But I assure you, your punishment will be much worse. Huh? What? Why? Camp director Miss Weaving? I feel like I'm actually being reasonably good compared to my classic bad boy antics. I don't know what sort of misbehavior is tolerated at Spooky High, but this is camp spooky, and I am going to hold you to my standards. You think it's an accomplishment to tone down the arson while encouraging it in ants? No, 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 Mr. LeBay. You may be in high school, but at least at the end of the day, you are literally a legal adult, and it's time for you to face consequences for your actions. Huh? But that isn't what my face is made for. It doesn't want to face responsibilities. It wants to face shenanigans and knife crime and being a badass. Well, until your face learns to behave, I'm afraid I'm going to have to confiscate from you. Ha! You can't do that. In fact, I'd like to see you try. <laughs> Jesus. Have a nice day, Mr. LeVay. I hope you learn a valuable lesson about what faces are for. My face? Ah, uh, what the fuck? What the fuck? How did she do that? How am I talking? I don't have a mouth. Ugh. So Damien is understanding freaking out, but with no way to get his face back, the best way to come to his rescue is to convince him that this is a good thing. Uh, you know what the best poker would as poker face is no face become a poker pro and make a fortune no more face no more intent <laughs> yeah no dentist okay fucking metal <laughs> <laughs> oh hell yeah i can respect a profession that's almost entirely scaring the shit out of people or causing them pain, but it's even better to outsmart those dumb fuckers. <sighs> get wrecked, dentists! You'll never get anywhere near my face again. Or maybe you will. I don't really know. I don't know where it is. But the point is, you won't get near me. Was someone facelessly shrieking about dentists? Has Dr. Pain Hurt Hurt Pain DDS arrived for his annual visit? That's Damien style, Who baby. Who gives a fuck? I don't have teeth. Thanks for saving me a fuck ton of money on emerg on dentistry bills, Miss Weaving. Are you mocking me, Mr. LeVay? Uh. No, I'm sincerely thank you for saving me money. How is that not clear? Oh, right. No facial expressions. It's like being on the internet, but in real life. <laughs> hey, Suzanne, can you draw a smiley face on me so Miss Weaving knows I'm actually happy about saving money? You do, and it's beautiful. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Thanks, and thank you, Miss Weaving, for sparing me the pain and financial hardship. No more Dennis for life, baby! Or death, because I'm ta taking this facelessness with me to the grave! Oh no, you are not, Mr. LeVay. I can admit when I was wrong, and clearly this punishment is counterproductive. Take your face back. <laughs> oh god. This isn't Terrifying. my face! This is a pancake! Oh, no, sorry. That's my breakfast. I was saving it for later. I'm certain you're far inferior faces in here somewhere. Damien's back! There we are. 
And as punishment for your early and earlier indiscretions, I'm ordering you to have yearly checkups with a dentist professional for the foreseeable future. It's so fair. <laughs> and jokes on her. I was bluffing. I fucking love the dentist. Sometimes I make them rip my teeth out and put them back just for the hell of it. You gotta admit, it's metal to be a doctor working on the only part of the skeleton on the outside. Did you know if you accidentally clink teeth while kissing, your skeletons are touching? <laughs> huh. Well, in that case, you hope to touch skeletons with Damien very, very soon. The plus two boldness and plus one charm you got should help you get there. Bill Murray. Garjo. Bill Murray. Yeah. I mean, I've heard he's an asshole, but yeah. he would definitely be. Let me take a walk through first. I don't think I've been to the woods yet. Uh oh. That's precious. While hiking through the woods, you come across a bunch of delicious edible mushrooms. She's dressed like a uh, Satsuki. Hmm? From Toner, the big sister. Oh, I never noticed that. Well, you think you're edible anyway. Th think they're edible anyway. I mean, you ate them. On a completely unrelated note, you also meet an ancient, all powerful god who's timelessly intelligent and also really into vaporwave for some reason. You gain plus three smarts from your dope conversation with the vaporwave god. Later, you join Dahlia, Arabi, and Hex for a high stakes round of bird watching. Best summer ever! Yes, is there anything more thrilling than two gals and their accursed pals sitting quietly and waiting patiently for a bird to land on the ground in front of them? Hmm. Actually, I can think of several things more exciting than this. I'm just here to lose some feathers from my brightly plumed enemies collection and complete my pigeon decks. Ravi girl! I'll end up, Ravi. Bird watching is the best. And in the six hours since I discovered it, I've basically become an expert. I too am fully committed. I even bought a book for this, and according to Naughty Pete's Guide for Avian Voyeurs, the best bird to watch of them all is the b bush tit. Huh? The wit? The what? Are you sure you didn't pick up a porno mag by accident? Uh. No, why would you even imply that? Not to be confused with the mammalian breast, the bush tit is a soft diminutive creature that I could easily crush with my bare fists. <laughs> but I choose not to because its puffiness pleases me. How does Naughty Pete say we should find the bird? Uh. Oh, Naughty Pete doesn't really dabble in the whole method of birdwatching. Once he identifies the birds, he devolves into more of a hardcore erotica thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's where Hex comes in. You're an expert on this, right? Put me in the direction of the titty. Uh, snacks though? Well, the first step to any adventure is to eat a snack. Oh, I'm um, okay. I guess I can eat this raw steak I was saving for later. What's step two? What do you mean? I never said this was a multi-step program. Huh? You have no idea how to birdwatch, do you? Huh? What kind of a question is that? If you look at birds, occasionally I put my own spin on it by watching Big Brother in, a, in between watching birds. It isn't rocket science. This. Is. Camp! Well that's not good enough for me, Arabi. You're better at this whole strategy stuff than I am. How would you summon an enemy from hiding? Well besides just slaughtering the entire ecosystem it's hiding in to save time, I might try luring it out with some food or by mimicking the screams of its family or- yeah! Wait, that's it. We'll just mimic the bush tits cry. But what sort of bird call should we mimic that? Would Laura go from hiding? Do you have any ideas redacted? He's the one call and no bird can resist the booty call. Don't just track the bird. Now with bird trap music. Uh, that's hard. Damn it! Good thing you brought your clubbing survival kit. You pull out your Bluetooth speaker and start blasting electronic. DJ Hex up in the pipes! Okay, I know I don't usually. I know I don't usually know jack about shit, but I can tell you from my DJing days that you're not playing bird trap music, you're playing bird house music. Uh, That's no big deal, birds love bird houses, right? This will still live in my hiding. Oh. Wait, I see your point. House music isn't going to attract the right kinds of birds. Uh, Turn that shit off, redacted, before it's too late. Why well, can no one ever say before it's too late, before it's already too late? No sooner has Aravi spoken than the woods are filled with sleazy raver birds. Everywhere you look, you see robins and crows wearing huge sunglasses and orange camel pants, offering to sell you on adulterated ecstasy and dancing up on your friends uninvited. Uh. Okay, just because I wanted to see a bush tit didn't mean I wanted to get motorboated by one. You're more of a winter person! 
Leave it to Redacted to make Birdwatch weird. Uh, muted and reported. We would have been better off with Naughty Pete. Enjoy your grind train, Redacted. I'm out of here. They leave you to die of unwanted bo boneritis with the birds. You're stuck spending the rest of the afternoon pairing bird dicks and listening to their boring LSD stories. <laughs> when you finally oh. do manage to slip away, those fuckers steal your Bluetooth speaker. Oh no! Use minus one beat spill plus. What? Plus, minus two boldness and minus one creativity. <laughs> Make way for the incoming storm! Let's go to the manor. <laughs> that day, you find a mirror in the haunted manor. But instead of showing your reflection, it shows you an exaggerated evil version of yourself. Evil you says, you will never surmount your insecurities. Look at how perfect I am, and look at how flawed you are. Nobody will ever love you. Oh. Counterpoint, many of your perceived flaws are totally fabricated by greedy companies looking to make a profit by promising to fix things you literally can't control. As soon as you say that, evil you shrieks bloody murder and disappears. Nice! You gain plus three boldness because you're amazing just the way you are. I'm so bold. <laughs> You're wandering through the woods hoping to meet some slutty pine cones when you see Damien. Listen up, noobs! Hey, dumbass, come here! Check out my fucking trap! He's crouched down on the ground and seems to be petting the dirt? Actually, I kinda psyched you here. Er, er I'm actually kinda psyched you're here. I know that you do that cute thing where you're super dumb sometimes, so I'll explain. You know about wildfires, right? And by wildfires, obviously I mean fires that run wild in the forest. The ones I've been trying to catch all summer. Well, I'm about to catch one! Rad! Using this awesome hole in the ground that I covered with leaves and shit! So the next time a wildfire runs over here, it'll fall in the hole. Boom! And then I'll train that wildfire to be my pet, and we'll have an unbreakable bond for life. <sighs> God, I can't fucking wait. That wildfire is gonna look like such a noob when it falls in. Now come on, hide in this tiny bush with me until the wildfire runs by. Y you take one look at the bush. It's super small. Hiding in there with Damien is going to require some real close quarters. You thirstily follow right behind him. And surprising no one, you both step on Damien's trap and fall into the hole. Fucking metal! Whoa! Fuck yeah! My trap is so good that it even tricks me! Its own creator! That's pretty fucking metal, hole! Damien pats the wall of the hole with pride. It's adorable. Uh. Oh my god, wait! If this hole was going to trap a wildfire and we just fell into it, wait! Holy shit! Are we trapped in this hole? We're fucking lost! I made this trap myself, so obviously there's a zero percent chance that anyone can escape it. There's literally no point in even trying to get out. Fuck! I'm just gonna state the obvious. We're definitely gonna fucking die in this hole. Are you listening to me, Suzanne? We will die here! Hmm. At this point, we've just got to accept the truth and try to adjust to our new lives in the hole. I'm officially making this corner of the hole our bathroom. Is he seriously turning into Yosuke and pissing wherever he wants? <laughs> oh wow, Damien is definitely committed to your new hole lifestyle. It would be rude not to follow suit. Quick, adjust to your new living situation and make the best of it. Track the morbid interest of mass media to cover your tragedy. Maybe they can throw you some free pizza. Is this hole so different from your normal life? Aren't we trapped in a hole called society? The best thing you can do is give the hole a cool. Fuckberg. Yeah, let's do that one. Okay. <gasps> Whoa! I never thought about it like that. Yeah, we are trapped in the hole of society, and now we're trapped in a hole inside that hole. That's so deep. Literally. Hmm. 
and I always wanted to rename society Fuckberg, but apparently you can only rename a si society if you're the vice president. <laughs> That's Damien style, so baby! I officially declare myself the vice president of this hole, and I officially declare that this hole to be known as Fuckberg, baby! You and Damien go to work starting the new society of Fuckberg. Along with the vice president, Damien declares himself chief of ass and secretary of, uh, secretary of infrastructure. You both work hard to institute a constitution of rights for Fuckberg citizens, as well as an official calendar of national holidays. <laughs> You're really looking forward to March 3rd, which is Fuckberg's official make sweet hot love to the other po person in the whole day. <laughs> A few days later, some reporters show up to cover the heartbreaking tragedy of two hot young adults trapped in a big hole. Fuckberg forever! You reporters have some- you have big juicy asses in your head instead of brains. You're the ones trapped in a hole. We're free down here, in Fuckberg! Fuckberg forever! <laughs> the reporters leave. Later, you're watching the news on the TV built from your hole. Uh, from the whole wall and scraps. You're the engineering chief of Fuckberg, which obvi gives you engineering powers. Maria here with Channel 9 News. Fuckberg, the new whole based society where hot young adults are going to escape the bleakness of modern life. Is Fuckberg just another fad? Or is it the place to be for this upcoming pre winter holiday break traveler season? Coming up, learn how to cook a pizza with your feet. <laughs> Holy shit, Suzanne! You're the most metal press secretary that Fuckberg has ever had! We're gonna have to have a bunch of rich yuppies coming here before you know it! Fuckberg forever! Let's Airbnb those yuppies till they're fucking broke! Fuckberg forever! <laughs> <laughs> you and Damien rent out the bathroom corner of Fuckberg on Airbnb. Damien's right. Loaded hipsters are paying through the nose to stay in Fuckberg. Along with the flood of tourists, Fuckberg receives several requests for citizenship from different corporations and real estate moguls. Along with hefty bribes. At first you're confused, but Damien explains that as Chief of Finance, he made Fuckberg into a very effective tax haven for corporations. After a few days of milking tourists and protecting businesses from paying fair taxes, you and Damien have more money than God because God doesn't have a bank account. Eventually, one of the Airbnb guests gets tired of falling into the hole, so they throw a rope down into Fuckberg. You and Damien climb out of the hole with, uh, with all of your cash. And Damien burns up the rope, trapping everyone inside. Fuckberg, er, trapping everyone inside Fuckberg forever. Suzanne, no matter what happens between us, we'll always have Fuckberg. Here's looking at you, kid. Okay, Bogart. <laughs> uh, you leave Fuckbird with loads of cash and beautiful memories of your days together with Damien. In this game, that's worth plus three fun. Fuckbird forever. Finally got some fun. Yeah. The last day of summer. A new chapter begins. Oh, I was like, why am I, why am I here? All right, we'll see. I don't. I don't have a good feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Let's storm this camp. I mean, yeah, it's Damien. Mm -hmm. A new chapter begins. You finally gather the courage and ask your beloved to watch the meteor shower with you. <sighs> Us as a summer fling, we're redacted. You're not a summer person, are you? I don't get those vibes from you, so you wouldn't be a great summer fling. You're more of a winter person! Uh. What was the name of that other season? I'm pretty sure there was a season called The Week and Uninteresting Season before winter and spring. <laughs> Between winter and spring. You're like, that. You're like that season person, I think. So I gotta pass this time. You could not handle Dahlia! No. This is terrible. Why did you take all those Monster Scout courses on surviving Veridax? You should have taken the ones on surviving rejection. You are not ready for this. You aren't ready for a bear attack either, apparently, since one attacks you right after that and you cannot do anything but get your whole face mauled. Let's storm this camp! 
You finally gather the courage and ask your beloved to watch the meteor shower with you. <laughs> Do you want to be my summer fling, huh? Rad! That sounds fucking rad. Aww. We can do so much dangerous shit together before school starts again. <laughs> I don't like that face he made. <laughs> I have so many terrible ideas on how to blow shit up that I can only do with another person. So, Suzanne, care to be my partner in crime? Your lawyer would advise you to say no, but your heart says absolutely yes! Best fucking summer ever! Aww. Last day of camp was very rad. Cute. You and Damien went on a romantic hike. Damien tried to fist fight a bear, and it chased you two for several miles. But as you were sprinting away from the bear, praying for your life, Damien held your hand! You fucking don't, uh, what? Hmm? The, the D word. What? Huh? Dick? The, the degenerate. Oh. Holding hands like degenerates. <laughs> you won. Yeah. yeah. Before we knew it, those weeks were gone. It felt like a hot minute, and it felt like an entire lifetime. That night, as we saw the summer came to an end, we all wondered what would come next for us. It felt like the end of something big. Little did we know, life still had many wonders and misadventures in store for us. Now I'm older and I can see it, how those years became the foundation of the mythology of our lives. Broken hearts turned tragedies sunk for centuries, wild nights became epics treasured forever. Every kiss and every laugh is now a consolation, we'll always find while gazing into the starry night, no matter how many years go by. Even today I can still close my eyes, and I'm there. On that last summer night. Feeling like I was just starting to live life. With all my friends around that campfire. So young and unafraid. And so ready to start. Welcome to the streamer version of the credit Oh my god. Thanks for the adorable. Fucking this fucking song. Oh, someone's in this. We won't huh? bother you down the line. Uh, Prezzy D? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You will Jesse Cox. There was another name I Streaming recognized, too. You won't get a strike. Playing Monster Camp. You could just I'll have to look at the cast. I select that this song is about streaming the game. You can just find Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell and whatever you will make your favorite streamer stay a bit better. Don't you forget it? If making content wasn't hard enough to worry about this stuff Like losing all your revenue or getting your third strike She's a Christ With Monster Cam <laughs> Streaming Monster Cam You won't get a strike Playing Monster Cam
up that writing songs for Ben to drum and they won't let me go until we sell a million copies. Streaming <laughs> monster camp, you won't get a strike. Playing monster camp, you'll be just fine. Say goodbye to the streamer version of the credit song. And remember, streaming monster camp. I think it's just, I think it's way funnier than whatever the regular song probably. Probably. Does it know that you're streaming it? I said it to streamer mode because it said specifically, oh, there's a song in this game that you'll get copyright striked for if you play it normally. <laughs> <laughs> they literally warn you for that. That's the only thing that streamer mode does apparently. Is it just changes that song huh. at the end. Because it, it was actually a pretty... Uh, the new pornographers. Uh, I think it's a pretty popular band, actually. That did the, la the, the uh, yeah, actual the new songs. For this. Yeah. Uh, they they did one of the fucking uh, Poco no Hero song. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the, that's who did the like actual end credit song apparently. So. Huh. But it was like it, that was yeah, flash during the credits that that uh that band and then it's like that. also that it's credited for like a thing or whatever and it's like oh. Uh, there's a streamer mode that like literally just changes the song at the end. <laughs> we also unlocked Kofi Beats to Relax Study to. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh. We should have. We should have. Why does the the Squidbilly have such anime fucking faces? Yeah. I was that even was that character? I don't even. Maybe that was the alternate for the yellow character, but I was like, I don't maybe. even recognize that character. Well, no. The, the alternate for Zombie Boy was the the jellyfish. Was he the alternate? Yeah, who was that character? character girl? Or is he- I'm confused. Or was he the alt for, um, Zoe? Uh, Zoe was the alt for Yellow. Hold on, I'm gonna look real quick. We're yeah. not gonna do another game, because I think, like, two hours is good, but I just wanted to look. Oh yeah, two hours is fine. I just want to see. Oh, it's the other alt oh, for yellow. Because yeah. Zoe's okay. technically another, it's like an extra DLC character that an I bought. extra, extra, yeah. Slays potato <laughs> <laughs> Alright, hold on. Let me see if I can find a raid target. I'm gonna close the game. Oh, I also just have a lot of Firefox tabs open. That's probably why it was I... making my stream really, stream weird earlier. I literally just had to calm down the number of tabs in my mobile Chrome browser from like 45 to 15. Because hmm. I didn't realize I had so many open. <laughs> okay. Let me see who's on. Um... Uh, bucket streaming. Uh, oh yeah, Jenny's watching. Uh, Jenny's. Yep. See you, Manuel. Um. Thanks for coming. I wanna. I'm gonna raid Jenny because she's playing Power Wash. Seems like a really chill time. 
Oh yeah, didn't they recently release a uh, Final Fantasy VII DLC for that? Did they? I don't. I didn't like, hear anything I know about that. I know the Tomb Raider Mansion is one, but I knew what? they were planning Final Fantasy VII DLC. I didn't know about either of those things. <laughs> yeah, you can do the Tomb Raider Mansion. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't know that they had like I mean, extra. It's published by Square. Is it? Yeah. I did not know that either. <laughs> Yeah, Power I guess I don't know anything about it. always gets lumped into the Square Enix sales. Weird. I didn't know that at all. <laughs> all I know is that they've been More pestering you know. they've been pestering Zentrea recently. <laughs> oh yeah. On Twitter. They've been making a lot of shit posts for some reason. Hmm. Alright. We're gonna raid Jenny. Alright. Uh, I'm probably gonna do another random gorilla stream tomorrow. Um, for X had to cancel again, but we're probably gonna get back to doing playing more Nobody Saves the World next week. Um, and then more Persona, and I think oh, Tuesday's actually gonna be since Tuesday's like a stream week and it falls on Valentine's Day. Um, I'm gonna do a stream where I rate people's waifus. <laughs> And do like oh, a yeah, that's why list. you were getting those. Yeah, I'm gonna put in my own too. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do for my Valentine's Day stream. <laughs> All right. Still really mad that Veg figured out that my type really just boils down to hat. Hat. <laughs> <laughs> like right. there's types mm. more deeply rooted in that, but. All of them wear fucking hats for the <laughs> the, the male identifying ones. And I'm angry about it. <laughs> All right, red's going through. That's yeah. handy. You can put a hat on anyone. <laughs> you sh you stop that right now, Manuel. <laughs> All right, red's going. Goodbye. Bye.